Good day, my name's Hugh Reed. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Reed Bar Review. Uh, we specialize in uh, tutoring, uh, not only for law school, but for the bar exam. And I want to give you a few memory devices, a few mnemonics that you can use, or acrostics or acronyms that you can use during test conditions. You see, under test conditions, much like in combat, I used to be an army ranger in my younger years, much too gray now. And then my, I ended my career being in charge of flight training uh, for uh, the uh, U.S. Army Warfighting Center uh, in uh, uh, Fort Rucker, Alabama. And uh, so what we pilots and what we rangers love are um, training exercises that can be reduced into uh, bite-size memory devices under anxiety conditions, much like you'll uh, encounter during testing conditions. So today, I'd like to share some of those with you as to how I remember uh, memory devices for easements. So if I get an easement question or an essay, or a multiple choice question, I can go through that checklist and in an organized fashion, lay out all of the possibilities and get all the points. That's what it's all about. So let's talk about easements. We know that we, uh, what, an, what is an easement, first of all? An easement is an incorporeal right or a non-possessory right to use land of another. So for example, uh, uh, if you want to cross your uh, neighbor uh, Fred's land to reach the highway, he could grant you an easement, right? Um, so it's an incorporeal or non-possessory right to use land of another. We have affirmative easements. We also have negative easements. The affirmative easements are easements appurtenant and easements in gross where negative easements are uh, uh, the common law recognized four of them and I remember them uh, with a mnemonic. So let me tell you how we can create easements first, then I'll tell you how we can extinguish or terminate easements, and then I'll give you the negative easements. So how do we create an easement? I remember the ways to create an easement with RIPEN, R-I-P-E-N, by reservation, by implication, by prescription, express grant in writing, and necessity. So if you want to write down RIPEN vertically, I'll fill it out horizontally. So how do we create an easement? RIPEN, R-I-P-E-N by reservation, by implication, by prescription, prescription, express grant in writing, and that's how most easements are created, by the way, express grant in writing, and finally, necessity. All right, so that's how we create an easement, and I'll go through and give you examples of that in a moment. How do we terminate or extinguish an easement? And I remember the, uh, the following ways you can terminate or extinguish an easement. Sure nap, S-U-R-E, N-A-P, S-U-R-E, N-A-P, just like the subject is for many of you, <laughs> but stay awake to at least write down the mnemonics. Sure nap, or in this case, it's an acrostic where the first letter of each word stands for something. The S stands for stated conditions. Stated conditions. The U stands for unity of ownership. Unity of ownership. I'll talk about that. The R stands for release, a release. The E stands for estoppel. The N stands for necessity, necessity. And finally, the P stands for prescription. All right, so we create an easement with ripen. 
we extinguish an easement with sure nap. Now having said, there are, uh, most easements are affirmative easements, there are also some negative easements, and the common law recognized four of them. I remember them with laws, L-A-W-S, laws. Light, air, water, water, and finally S, support, support. So we create an affirmative easement with ripen, we extinguish it with sure nap, and we have negative easements, uh, which we can remember with laws, laws. All right, now having said uh, what an easement is, uh, let's go through classification of easements first so we can understand some of these mnemonics. Affirmative easements, all right? Uh, affirmative easements come in two flavors. We have an a easement appurtenant and an easement in gross. An easement appurtenant is where we have a uh, dominant estate and we have a servient estate, dominant and servient estate. So the easement appurtenant affords the holder the right to use the land of another. My crossing my, my neighbor's Fred's land, I would have the dominant estate, he would have the servient estate, all right? An easement in gross only has one estate, that's the servient estate. A commercial easement in gross may be the utility company having the right to dig a hole in your land to lay utility lines. A personal easement uh, would be you giving me the right to um, a fish on your pond or something like that. That would be a, a, uh, uh, a personal easement in gross, all right? So, dominant estate, servient estate, easement in gross. What happens when the dominant estate holder transfers his land? This is often tested. Well, without any mention of it in the deed, that easement is transferred with the dominant estate. So dominant estate holder sells his house. I sell my house to Bubba. Can Bubba now cross Fred's land if I have an easement across Fred's land? The answer is yes, he can. What happens if my neighbor Fred sells his land? Well, if he sells it to a bona fide purchaser, a person who pays value in good faith without notice of the easement, the easement is cut off. However, most easements are recorded. So, whoever buys Fred's land would have knowledge, constructive knowledge of that easement, and therefore the land is sold subject to the easement. So transfer of easement often tested. Right? And when you're in doubt on the exam, uh, think about favor easements appurtenant. Most easements are easements appurtenant where we have a dominant estate and a, uh, a servient estate. How about an easement in gross when you transfer an easement in gross? Well, an easement in gross, a personal easement, cannot be transferred by the holder. It's assumed that the servient estate holder granted the easement on the basis of a personal relationship. However, a um, a commercial easement in gross uh, can be sold. Uh, it is uh, it is freely transferable. All right. So we said most easements are easements, uh, affirmative easements. Some we said are negative easements, and that's laws, L-A-W-S. So a negative easement gives the holder of the dominant estate the right to restrict the owner of the servient estate from using her land in some way 
that she would be entitled to absent the easement. It's much like a restrictive covenant. So a negative easement is much like a restrictive uh, uh, covenant where the negative easement holder gives a holder of the dominant estate the right to restrict someone else's use of their land. And we said the common law recognized four of them laws, L-A-W-S. All right. All right. Let's talk a little bit about creation of an easement. We said an easement can be created by ripen, R-I-P-E-N. So an easement by reservation uh, gives the owner of a tract of land, uh, he, once he conveys title, but he reserves the right to continue to use the tract for a special purpose. All right? So an easement, uh, for example, could be created by deed, and if the deed is from the servient, the dominant tenant, the easement has been granted. A person may also grant property and reserve an easement in his favor in the same deed. All right? So uh, an easement by reservation is where, uh, the, uh, where the, you see a transfer of land and the person who transfers the land reserves the right to use the land in a certain way. Okay? I transfer the front lot to a huge lot to you, but I need to reserve a right to cross that lot to reach the highway. That would be an easement by reservation. All right? Now, what about... Um, Implication, implication. This is one of the toughest areas to understand, and I'd urge you to work some questions, because under some circumstances, an easement by implication be created by operation of law, rather than through an express grant or reservation in a written uh, deed. So easements by implication occur in two instances. One, easement arising from an existing use, and two, easements based on necessity. So if there's an existing uh, uh, use when an owner of a tract of land divides a tract on which a use of one part of the property uh, benefits another and conveys one tract under circumstances where it can be inferred that the parties intend that the uh, easement become an easement despite the fact that the deed is silent, then that's an easement by implication. Let me give you an example. Let's say A uses a driveway from his house across his property that constitutes the only practical means of accessing a highway. He sells his house to B, retaining part of the track across which the driveway runs. Even if the deed is silent, a court may find an easement created by an implied grant. All right? So, um, such an easement um, obviously is not going to be able to arise uh, unless both the dominant and servient estates were once held by a common owner. All right? And then, um, an easement by necessity. Easement by necessity. This is very harshly construed. There's no other way to access uh, a highway or to access, uh, to get off of your land, all right? So it can be created without prior use when the property owner severs and conveys a tract that thereafter has no access to a public road. And uh, so the right of access is based on public policy. And an easement by necessity has only two requirements, strict necessity and common ownership. All right? So the need for the right, to, uh, of ease, uh, right of an easement has to be very great. All right? So ripen. Um, the P is prescription. Prescription is much like, uh, is much like adverse possession, with one exception and that's exclusivity. If you want to write down the elements of adverse possession, I remember them with halibut, 
H-E-L-U-V-A, hostile, exclusive, lasting, uninterrupted, visible, and actual, hell of a. Those are the elements of adverse possession, that is, acquiring title to land without really owning it. A squatter sits on your land. Common law, it was 20 years. He sits on the land without permission. Land is so important that the law said, if someone sits on your land for 20 years and he does it uh, openly and notoriously, that's what halibut means, exclusively, he's the only one who does it. Lasting for the 20 years, without an eruption, there are certain exceptions, uninterrupted, and finally, uh, uh, or visible and actual, then he's the new owner of the land. Right? Prescriptive easements are much like adverse possession. However, it does not have to be exclusive. That is, if you allow strangers to walk across your front yard as a shortcut for a period of time, most jurisdictions five, ten years, they now have the right to do that. They have attained an easement to cross your land. So, it's a stranger that walks across your land, but it can be many strangers. It does not have to be uh, one stranger, as is the case for adverse possession. All right, All right. ripen. Uh, the E in uh, uh, in how we create an easement stands for exclusivity. Uh, I, I strike that. Express grant in writing. Express grant in writing is how most easements are created. The most straightforward way of creating an easement by a deed or a will. Express grant in writing. And finally, necessity. Necessity. So, uh, the creation of easement has to be in accordance with the statute of frauds, uh, requiring that there be a writing, usually a deed, and it's properly executed and delivered. Express grant in writing the necessity to, uh, to get to a public highway has to be very great, and courts will look to uh, each situation to find that there is a uh, necessity, a, ne uh, a necessity to uh, uh, to uh, create an easement by necessity. All right. So, can be created without prior use, where the property owner severs and conveys a tract that thereafter has no access to public roads, and uh, and the right of access is based on public policy. That's all there is. All right. That's how we create an easement. Now, let's talk about sure nap. How do we extinguish an easement, all right? How do we extinguish an easement, termination of an easement? Right? That's what we're talking about. Easements can be terminated a number of ways. And I said, remember the acronym or acrostic, sure nap, sure nap. S stands for stated conditions. Any stated conditions in an express grant in writing or writing, we're going to follow those stated conditions. You have an easement for 10 years or something like that. Well, it terminates. It can also be extinguished by or terminated by unity of ownership. If the dominant estate and the servient estate are merged, all right? That easement merges with the servient estate, the dominant estate merges with the servient estate and is thereafter extinguished, all right? And it's not revived, by the way, thereafter. If one owner owns both the servient and the dominant estate, it merges, unity of ownership. It could be severed by, uh, or terminated rather, by release, release. A written release that satisfies the statute of frauds gives the holder of the easement um, a release of that easement, all right? So, uh, 
I mean, there's there are some exceptions, obviously, if the owner, um, uh, if title to an easement appurtenant is part of the dominant estate and cannot be conveyed separately, that would be an exception. Uh, the R, uh, strike that, the E, estoppel, estoppel. An easement can be terminated by estoppel. So uh, if the owner of the easement makes some representation that she's abandoning the easement exp expressly or implicitly, and uh, the owner of the servient estate changes her position in reasonable reliance of that representation. That would be termination by estoppel. The N in NAP stands for necessity. Just like an easement can be created by necessity, it can be terminated by necessity. The A in NAP stands for abandonment, and this is uh, heavily tested. Mere non-use does not terminate an easement. Mere non-use does not terminate an easement, even for an extended period of time, a hundred years does not terminate an easement. Nor does an oral declaration that you're not going to use it terminate an easement. However, it can be abandoned by non-use together with an act, an affirmative act, by the holder that indicates an intent never to use it again. All right. So let's say A has a driveway easement across B's property leading to a dirt road. A new road is thereafter constructed that provides A with direct access. So A builds a concrete driveway to the road and stops using the easement. A court may find this to constitute abandonment by action terminating the easement. And finally, prescription. Um, an easement can be terminated by prescription if the owner of the servient estate uses his property in a way that interferes with the easement to such an extent it's inconsistent with continuation for the period of the statute of limitations. So the interference has to uh, meet the uh, requirements for acquiring the property uh, rights by prescription in the first place. All right. Well, that's easements. Now, uh, what you want to tell the examiner, if it's an essay, first of all, that um, uh, an easement is the right to use someone else's property. It's a non-possessory right to use someone else's property. We have affirmative easements. We have negative easements. Affirmative easements can be created by RIPEN, R-I-P-E-N. Negative easements are restricted to four under the common law laws, L-A-W-S. Thereafter, an easement can be terminated or extinguished. Don't say an easement will be ended or something like that. Use legal language, terminated or extinguished by sure nap, sure nap. And finally, I would always draw a distinction between an easement and a license and a profit. Whereas a, a easement is the right to use someone else's land, non-possessory right to use someone else's land, so is a license, so is a profit. However, a license is normally revocable at will, freely revocable unless it's a license with a uh, coupled with an interest, a license coupled with an interest. So, uh, a license that is uh, coupled with an interest where someone has paid consideration, uh, that is not freely ro revocable. All other easements are freely revocable. Uh, all other licenses are freely revocable. And a license can be oral, right? does not have to meet the statute of frauds. So uh, it could be something like uh, the use of a hotel room, uh, the right to stay in a hotel room, or rights to attend a sporting event or entertainment events. Those are mere licenses. 
And finally, um, a profit. What's a profit? A profit is the right to go onto someone else's land and remove some resources from the land, such as timber, water, uh, coal. It's the right to go onto someone else's land to remove some resources from the land. And the distinction that you have to draw between easements and profits is that surcharge or overuse of property does not terminate an easement. However, it does terminate a profit. So let's say uh, someone has a right to drive across your land. You wake up your mo uh, one morning uh, and you see uh, dump trucks driving across your land. Clearly, it's a surcharge. It's an overuse. It's not something that you intended for uh, the dominant estate holder to use your land in that manner. What's your remedy? Your remedy is to seek an injunction and seek damages. That's your remedy. It does not terminate the, uh, uh, the easement, unlike a profit. Well, that's a short version of easements, how we create an easement, how we terminate an easement, how we distinguish affirmative easements from negative easements, and how we distinguish easements from licenses and profits. If you want the longer version, uh, you can go to our website at Read Bar Review, register an account, and go ahead and uh, uh, get a free property course along with the flashcards, the outline, the lecture, or any other course that you want. One is free. Thereafter, uh, we can help you uh, not only throughout law school, but for the bar exam. ReadBarReview.com or call us 1-800-852-EXAM. Thank you.